obviously I'm a very experienced gymnast. It was 2014 where I started my international journey. Little tiny gymnast, very fast with her movements. Dragapani, the golden girl once more. Lots of energy, lots of excitement and charisma. Absolutely first class. I just wanted to get back out there and do what I love. And sitting alongside me to talk you through the action this afternoon are two European floor champions themselves, Beth Tweddle and Christian Thomas. Welcome to you both. So, as we saw there, Claudia is back from injury, highest qualifier. How do you think she's going to fare today? I think she's going to do great. I mean, she obviously had a tough year fighting back from that injury, but they've, they've worked hard with her. She's worked hard with her coaches and medical staff. And it was great to see her so smiley after that performance. You could see what it meant to her to be back out on that stage. Yeah, well, there's a lot of gymnastics to look forward to this afternoon. Uh, here is the order of play. So Courtney's going to be up on vault. Uh, first of Alice Kinsella's finals very soon. Uh, Bryn Bevan on P-bars. We've got two Brits in the floor finals. We've said Claudia Fragapani, the highest qualifier, and that'll be Alice's second final of the day too. And then the blue ribboned event of the championships, the high bar, is the last final with Great Britain's James Hall and Epke Zonderland. So lots to get our teeth into here, Christian. Any gymnasts in particular that you're looking forward to seeing? Well, I think the way that these European championships have gone so far, I think, you know, the Russians have been so, so dominant. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the vault, fresh from his gold medal yesterday in the rings, Denis de Blasian, you know, he's probably one of the most experienced um, vaulters within this competition. Multiple time Olympic medalist, and you can see here from his vaults in, uh, in Rio Olympics. So he's going to have a point to prove because he's been at the team for a little while now and he knows he needs to start pushing either going down that individual route or forcing a, a place back in that Russian team because their level at the minute is just so, so good. Yeah. Um, and then on the next few apparatus, the parallel bars, again, Russian dominance. We have Nikita <laughs> Nagorny, top qualifier, but then also on the high bar, hopefully, we'll get to see Epke at his very, very best. You know, just a fantastic gymnast to watch, an incredible ambassador for our sport. He's been going for absolutely ever. Look at um, him there. Exactly. And you never actually quite know what routine he's going to do. It depends how he catches his releases yeah. to then go into his next uh, release, whether he combines them or not. So that just shows his level of experience and uh, such a well-respected gymnast on the international stage as well. Yeah. Well, there he is, winning his third world title. Uh, and Beth, on the women's side, let's start with the beam. Yeah, so we've got Pauline Schaefer from Germany. She's medalled internationally, so we know that she's capable of doing that. She's a very classy gymnast to watch. Uh, Mel Nikova's had a great championships from Russia so far, um, and obviously she'll be looking to pick up another medal. And then over on the floor, um, obviously we'll be all rooting for Alice and Claudia, but we know that Melanie de Jesus de Santos has has got it in her to win that title as well, especially off the back of winning the all-around title. Well, let's get straight into the action. I'm going up to the commentary box to sit alongside Christine Still and Craig Heap. And the first final is the beam. These are the competitors. You can see third up will be Great Britain's Alice Kinsella in her first major final. And the highest qualifier uh, is Georgia Vila from Italy. And there we can see the start list for the men's vault. All eight qualifiers, the ones to watch, though, are the top two Russians. Denis Abliazin was Olympic silver medalist in 2012 and 2016. But keep an eye out for Courtney Tulloch of Great Britain, qualified in fifth, but a real opportunity to get in the mix. So Loretta Charpy will start this women's beam European final. She's 17 years old. Very secure on that very difficult mount. Back somersault to the beam. Secure as well on the acrobatic series. These gymnasts have to include two acrobatic moves, but that's very impressive. A triple spin, and then she follows it with a double spin. You can do triple and double, and they both count towards your difficulty total. 
there, the free cartwheel. Gymnasts have to produce moves that go forward, backwards, sideways, and leaps as well. That was a good combination, three elements in a row. We saw Lorette Sharpie on bars yesterday in the final, producing very good work. Oh, but that was a very tentative jump. Jumps with turns are always difficult. She regains her composure for the free walkover, but just missed the combination. If you can do an acrobatic move immediately into a jump, it gets you some bonus points. Always tricky to come out as the lead-off person. See the little pause before the dismount. Big round of very nice double pike dismount. She'll be delighted to have stayed on, but her difficulty score will be a little bit lower because she didn't quite make every connection. There we can see the concentration the, on the acrobatic series, the flick into the layout. And then this, the single spin on one leg, it's really popular now on this piece of apparatus. And that's the bit in the routine. She had to fight to stay on, well held and stands up into the round off. Double pipe back dismount. Not without errors, but through the routine. Well, Great Britain's Courtney Tullock will be the first gymnast to go on vault. These finals are running back to back, the women's beam and the men's vault. Courtney will have two vaults. You can see he's posting a difficulty of five, six. So as fifth highest qualifier, can certainly get into the mix here. Suits him this piece of apparatus, such a powerful gymnast. Just watch this. Hops off the top, the double front somersault with a half turn. Just didn't get the same block as he did in qualification. Lost a bit of height. Forced to put his hands down. First thing the coach is saying, ankles okay. Just look a bit dejected. Well, it was lovely and high, but you've got to squeeze a half turn in there. And uh, it was a bit, it didn't really have enough time in the air to make the half turn. You can see one somersault, two somersaults, and he's already back level with the platform. The half turn was ambitious, but if you want a medal, you've got to be ambitious. Huge height. It's unbelievable how gymnasts these days are really pushing the laws of gravity to squeeze in that extra little half turn just to up the difficulty. Just making sure the board is in the right place because the second vault has to be different different entrance to the table talking in the studio yesterday today about how the new table has revolutionized vaulting so the different run-ups that the gymnasts have just to make sure they're absolutely on the right foot so 13.233 for courtney's first vault is in then for vault number two. You're doing everything you can to make sure of the block on this one for the last vault. Well, it's another big vault. That's really attacked the vault. Wraps in the double pike, Sukahara, and what a shame. Under-rotated the first vault and then over-rotated a bit on the second. And this is the the exciting thing about this piece of apparatus you know the gymnast have to go for broke with massive vaults just sat back a little bit there i always think it's very tough having to do the second vault when you've already mucked up the first 12.9 for loretta charpy after a little wobble on the split leap just a 7-9 in execution the judges are eagle-eyed on the beam Anastasia Kaczynska now from Ukraine. She's the fourth highest qualifier. The youngest gymnast in this final, just 15 years old. Very nice backflip mount onto the beam. She's got some very original work in this exercise. Watch this big series here. 
Handspring immediate front somersault. Oh, that's a big shame. We saw her in the all-around competition perform that so confidently, but it's a very risky move. She knows she's lost one mark, but she has to get back on, try and compose herself. Two very nice leaps, but they were meant to have been joined, and uh, she didn't quite manage to link them together. That's better with the free walkover. Super technique. She's very nicely extended. Legs are always straight, toes pointed. She's got all the hallmarks of a beautiful beam worker. That's a series she's performing well. The split leap into the free cartwheel. And that was very good. The changed leg to ring. She touched her head with her back foot and that's what the judges want to see. They'll give it a high value if she does that. So it hasn't been a perfect routine, but she'll want a perfect dismount. Good, strong double back, and it's pretty near perfect for this round. What a shame about that opening series. Well, beautiful gymnast on this piece of our pitches, but this is such a difficult combination. The handspring into the front somersault. Let's just remember the beam, it's only 10 centimetres wide. And finishes very well there. The double back somersault, plenty of height. I think a big future ahead, just 15 years of age. 13-3-8-3 for Courtney Tullock. So Nicolò Ottolini from Italy, the second gymnast in this final. 14.433 is the highest vault score that he's posted here in Poland. Obviously a very powerful gymnast. He was in the floor final yesterday. Oh, that was nice. Wraps in the Sukahara with a two and a half twist. Plenty of height from the top of the platform. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Great form through the air. Beautiful, stylish gymnast. He is relatively slight, but lovely technique. He rocketed off the top, wrapped in the two and a half twists, and really aware of where he was. Tiny bit offline, but absolutely masses of height. That's easily a triple twister in 12 months time, I think, Christine. He had so much flight off the top of the platform. Well, his second vault, as you can see, is slightly easier. He's put a 4.8 up for the difficulty. So if he was to get 10 out of 10 for his execution, then the whole vault would be marked out of 14.8. Maybe this is where gymnasts debate whether or not they're going to go all out for difficulty or concentrate on execution. 14.666. It's called a 9.466 for execution with that vault. So a slightly shorter run up on this one. Yeah, we can tell by the springboard it's a Yuchenko approach. Oh, that was good. The Yuchenko with the double twist. Not the highest difficulty we'll see in this vault final, but he will be doing exceptionally well there on the execution. Just look at that. Blocks in. Double twist. Plenty of time to spot the floor. Two super vaults. Shinska scores 11.633, puts her in second so far. Next up, onto the beam from Great Britain, Alice Kinsella. She qualified with the third highest score. Well, come on, Alice. 
I coach her, so lots of nerves. This is the important spin. Slow but precise, good start there. Nicely on her toes, she needs to power into her acrobatic series here. This is the nerve wracking bait, free cartwheel layout. Layout, she holds it on, well done Alice. Bonus points there. Needs to keep her concentration for the all important leap series. You have to join two leaps, there's one, there's the second. She's done a sideways element to layout, has to show a forwards element. This is it, she'll need to use all her power and concentration, free walk over, plops the foot down. Nice, you have to do a bit of sideways dance. Here that comes. And then just the big dismount, new dismount for this championships. It's a big test for her. Has to make the round off big and strong. Lift up into the air, double pike. Well done, oh. Alice, fantastic routine. I couldn't be more delighted with that. Oh, Chris, I'm over the moon <laughs> for you. I really am. That was something else, wasn't it? I didn't want to put too much pressure on that at the beginning, but my word, she held on so good. Well, oh, she did, fantastic. And greeted by our coach, Bretton, so she came off. Bartolini, he vaults up into first at the moment, 14.449. He's happy with that. Could be in that medal spot for a while. So. The score to beat for Alice, 12.9 as it stands at the moment. Well, I'm sure there'll be many other great performances coming along, but I'm delighted with that for her. Arta, not an iron. The next gymnast at the end of the vault runway. He is the highest qualifier, two-time European champion, the current champion. And here he goes. An extremely powerful and dynamic on this piece of apparatus. There you can see the Yuchenko with the triple twist. You won't see many of these in this competition, and he made it look effortless. Well, you won't see many performed as well as that either. You have to have such a particular block up to wrap those three twists in. We usually see gymnasts just about screwing it round. That was immaculate. And really, the judges have to deduct from 10 marks. Can you see legs apart? I can't. Just a little hop. He was right in the middle. That's got to be a big high nine execution. Nine plus. His landings of every piece of apparatus look the same. Feet are locked together, head down. Gets that center of gravity over the landing point. Well, he put in a 14.8 in qualification with that vault. Well, I'd, I'd give that a 15, but I mean, where do, you, where do you take, you know, the deductions on that? That was fabulous. He's got a gold medal on the floor already at these championships. He took the silver medal in the all-around competition. It's going to be hard to steal a medal off him here. 14.933 for his first vault. He stuck with the same difficulty in qualification. We'll see in a second if you just look at that difficulty board, what he's posting here. Is it a 5-6 or higher? It's a 6 he's gone for. He's gone for the the vault that uh, let him down a bit in the all-around, but he's not holding back. He's going for it. Goodness me. Brace yourselves, people. Now, what's so special is this? The number of days of competition back-to-back, -back, and he's packing it in. Now, he'll have to attack this. Come on, look at this. He blocks the double five front somersault half turn. Actually, that was better than the qualification, but the hands down, unfortunately, will be costly. And he's very cross with himself there, really. It's the big dilemma, isn't it? You do what you know you can do easily, 
Or do you go for broke? Well, this guy always goes for broke. And there's the double pike front. He held on to the straight legs for a good long time, yeah. but uh, he just didn't have enough rotation to be able to go round twice in the pike position. Alice Kinsella, 13, 5, 6, 6. It's the same as she scored in qualification, and she qualified third. So, well, now's the nervous one. Isn't it? <laughs> but she did her best. I'm thrilled for her. Yara Kaislin, the next gymnast up from Switzerland. Fifth at the Europeans in 2018. Fourth, two years before. And a very beautiful, elegant gymnast. Super leap there, really hit the splits well. Judges want to see leaps really showing the split position. Confident acrobatic series, that certainly was. Half turn onto the hands into the sheep jump. You take the feet right back and touch the head. And then the full turning backflip, just a little wobble at the end of that. When you flick the head back like that and touch the head with the foot, that's a very difficult move. And another very difficult spin with the foot right up to the face. She's got lovely rhythm. Smoothly through the free walkover. Two relatively simple jumps to make sure she gets the link. And the uh, bell means you've got 10 seconds to dismount. Here we see it. Just a relatively simple full twist finish, but lots of difficult work and very nice rhythm on the beam there. Here we go. Full twisting flake. A little bit of an adjustment there on the landing, so that will pick up a little bit of a deduction, but as we've said, it's better to take those little wobbles than fall off. 14-5-3-3 is the average for Dalla Lyon. He leads the field ahead of Nicola Bartolini, Courtney Tullock now in third. Benjamin Michard going for a 5.2, so opting for easier vaulting but we're going to concentrate on the execution so this gymnast was the seventh highest qualifier again another finalist on the floor you can see why the sukahara with the two and a half twist a little difficult to split these two and a halves at the minute great height and flight on that vault and uh, Fantastic spatial awareness, Christine. Yes, the two and a half, either from the uh, flip on or the half turn on, is really the most popular vault at this level. You see, turns on, blocks up nice and high, wraps in with two and a half twists. For no deductions, you need to land on the white line. He's just a little bit off. And you can see a judge right at the end who will be watching that line to see whether they're right on or a little bit off. Thirteen point three eight three is Courtney Tullock's average score. He's in that third medal position at the moment. Fourteen five for the first one. Good nine three for execution. Same difficulty and qualification for both vaults. 5 2 again, you can just see on the scoreboard on the right hand side, off he goes. Well, he powers down and attacks the vaulting platform, the handspring, double front somersault. Super control on the landing there, he's ecstatic with that. As in, probably not the most difficult vaults we'll see, but it, this is all about consistency a vault final, two vaults. Well done, key shot.
Yeah, I was quite surprised at that. I didn't expect him, and he shows great variety. One vault a twisting and one a double somersaulting. Yara Kirzlin, 12.833. She's in third. Alice leads at the moment. And Christine looks <laughs> anxiously <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, it was the, Alice's difficulty scores 5-5. Five, five. Kaislin's was only 4-9 there, so that's the big difference, really. Well, Pauline Schiffer is a gymnast that Beth Tweddle was talking about a little bit earlier on. She's the second highest qualifier here. Was world champion back in 2017. Lovely leap on the change leg leap. It's very dynamic. And the oh so important acrobatic series. Again, beautiful lift onto the toes. Smooth in the very difficult change leg ring. After each Olympics, the judges sort of change a little bit their emphasis and they've... Oh, she just about held on there. And this cycle, they're very much looking for super extension through the feet, work up on the toes. And that's her, her trademark. The side summy with an extra half turn. It's her original move, very difficult. Oh, but the split jump with the half turn. They get well credited for these elements that land facing away from the beam, but they're very difficult to become consistent on. You're almost blind and just hoping the beam's underneath you. Gymnasts have to show elements low to the beam, so a little bit down. So she's used the side summy, the side summy half and the free cartwheel. Lots of variety of elements. And now here, the straight gainer dismount. It looks a relatively quiet dismount, but it's very difficult and very well coded. But she'll know one whole mark off for a fall will put her out of contention. Absolutely. You can't fall a fall from any piece of apparatus. There's the difficult spin. Turn around, did well to control. She'll struggle to get into the 12s, I think probably about high 11s, potentially. Well, Guichard's gone up into second with an average score of 14.483. How long will he stay there for? They're checking the roof's still on from all of these high vaults. I, d I think the scores are up in the ceiling for them because Max yesterday was saying, I can't see my score when he'd come off the pommel horse. Well, we've watched Igor Radovilov so many vault finals, finals around the world. Silver four times in the European Championships. They'll be disappointed with his rings final yesterday, but he'll want to make amends. Look at this, the double front half turn, Dragulescu vault. Oh, -ho! now you're talking. That's how you do the Dragulescu. He kicks out at the perfect moment and he almost gives a second lot of energy. Look, one, two, and extend out and sort of lifts the body through the half turn. You can, can't you, Craig? Get, ex like, you can get energy from that extension. Absolutely. And it, I think his contact with the top of the vault there is absolutely perfect. You can see he's kicked out, half turned, as he's level with the vault. It gives him such time to see the floor. Yeah, that's another one that's going to be difficult to take deductions. Because, you know, they say they deduct if the chest is low to the floor. Well, that slow motion shot showed us completely. You could read the letters on the front of his leotard. He was completely upright. See the flag. I think he was very disappointed yesterday with his rings performance and his comeback today. I mean, a medal mean a big thing back in his country. 14-5-3-3 is 
Della Lyons' average score. Can he do enough here to vault himself up into that gold medal position? Take that medal that has eluded him for so long. 15 is a very, very good start. 9.4 in execution. Where did the point six go to? <laughs> he knows. Look how fired up he is for this second vault. He's going for the 5 6. So not as difficult as Dallalion. This could be the right tactic. It's going to be all in the execution. Here you go. Very bit off. Vaulting for gold. Just look at the concentration, different entry, wraps in, the double pack, and he can't control it. Oh, my word, what a shame. You can see the look oh, on his face. He just cannot believe it, can he? So much height, pulls the pike in. You absolutely just have to let go of those legs and time it right, and he just overcooked it, didn't he? Well, he had the kick out on the first vault, but that Dragulescu allows you to almost spot the mat if you've got the height, whereas that one, it's so rapid and quick, he knows what could have been. Well, the pike, double pike somersaults are so difficult because the hips have to be in the right place when you land and hit the floor. Pauline Schiffer scores an 11.7, uncharacteristic for her. She's in fourth and out of the medals. Three gymnasts to go then in this beam final. Georgia Villa is next up. She was the highest qualifier. 13.566 is the highest score posted so far by Great Britain's Alice Consan. Oh, and that was a big wobble. Hands on the beam, quite a big deduction. Georgia Villa was junior European champion last year and youth Olympic champion. Oh, round off full twist, huge difficulty, huge risk. But she came off, so she's lost a mark. A little bit rattled, it's always so difficult to get back on the beam, regain your composure. Sets herself up for a very nice double spin. It's full of risk, this routine. And when the risk pays off, the big score's there. I really love that, the backward roll to handstand. That's more like it, she's finding her rhythm now. The secret is to get keep your rhythm. Stand around too long and allow yourself to wobble, but that was good, two leaps joined. Here comes the dismount, double pike, oh, and that's really not a happy outing for Georgia Vila at all. She's been a bit off, hasn't she, with the whole championships? Has. She has, we really expected her to burst onto the senior scene. This, this generation of Italian gymnasts have absolutely dominated the junior ranks over the last two years. Yeah, such a shame because such a difficult routine there. The round off into the back somersault with full twist. It's difficult to learn doing a single somersault. Such a shame. Out of Ilov, fourth, 14, 2, 3, 3 is the average. He knows. Rather looking at the scoreboard. Not his weekend. highest qualifier. Belarus over the years have provided with some great vaulters. And then, you can see, two and a half twist from the Sukahara. Slight adjustment on landing. She's got 14-4 in qualification on this first vault. Should be somewhere similar, maybe high 13s. Yeah, there was a big step on landing, wasn't there? And a little bit of ill discipline in the legs. Those are the little things that set the vaults apart. 
but beautiful flight. I mean, these gymnasts just rocket off the top of this platform. It's got springs in the front of it, so if you're bold enough to hit the front, they really can launch you up. It's like hitting a springboard. Well, Sharamku is the youngest gymnast in this vault final. 20 years old. 14 2 6, 6 for that first vault, so just down a little bit on his qualification score for that same vault. Again, a 5-2 posted, so the whole vault is marked out at 15.2. That's the maximum score he can get. Need to concentrate for the second vault. Strong approach. Oh, that was nice. He does the Dragulescu. The handspring double front with a half turn. Two decent, solid vaults there. Might just pop him up there. We've had quite a few falls in this final. It might indeed. And super lift, nice, high, tight tuck, chest really well in, tiny bit offline, but that was a very good vault. Great to see Belarus back up there. 11.2 for Georgia Villa, after sitting out on that dismount. She's in sixth. Two gymnasts are left to go in the beam final, so that guarantees Alice Kinsella a medal. I'm, I'm just speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find my voice for this. <laughs> Denisa Golgotta, 17 years old, eighth highest qualifier. And a bit of a strange angle there, but she mounted with the change leg leap and went straight into the change leg half. So she's got very nice combination already. Backflip, somersault to two feet. Of course, the Romanians have such a heritage of great gymnasts on beam, and that was a super high front somersault. Strong side somersault as well. Very much the star of the Romanian team at the moment, but that was a side somersault or a free cartwheel straight off the side it's quite often the easy moves that are catching these gymnasts out and she's a little bit rattled now actually it's been pretty impressive routine until that moment there's her two leaps and this is a very popular spin for the gymnast you have to include a full spin at least a full spin and the one in the squat position gets you more marks than the one standing up. Quickly into the dismount, sharp double back. She's a great tumbler. Well, that was. She'll be very disappointed because that was a relatively easy move she allowed to catch her out. Yeah, very beautiful on this piece of apparatus. Nice to see Romania back in apparatus finals. They've certainly been missed within European gymnastics for the past few years. Sharamku just waiting for his score. We said 20 years old, so what a prospect for Tokyo. Quite a slight gymnast as well. Really, um, really impressed with the, that vaulting. You can see the difference, though, between his vault and Radivilov on the Dragulescu, the double front half turn. Radivilov must have had an extra three feet in the air. You know, it was stood right up where uh, Sharamku was a little bit lower in the chest but I mean put two volts together there let's see what happens well he's up in the second 14 516 yeah 9166 the execution as opposed to 94 so that was reflected in the landing can he stay in medal contention there's two gymnasts left to go and this lad will have something to say about it Dennis Abliazin Two-time European champion, and a silver at the Olympics. Brace yourselves, people. He'll have his eye on gold. Such a powerful, determined gymnast. Just look at this. Oh, wow, the handspring straight front wraps in with a twist. That was a fantastic opening vault. He's certainly laying down the challenge. 
We've seen some immaculate vaults here. Look, hands bring up, 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 wrapping two and a half twists. Just tech sport work. Often you see gymnasts scrabbling around to get the twists in, but he lifted so high and then twisted so fast. Chest was down on that landing, but a fantastic height. You also see generally gymnasts on those front entry bolts with leg separation from the springboard. Brilliant replays. Feet were locked together, giving him immense block. Uh, that should score very well. Well, his teammate has an average of 14.533. He's leading the field. It's Dalalayan. Sharamku 14.516. Guichard 14483. 15. It's all on the second vault. Abliazin, and he's gone for the easier one in comparison to his teammate Dalalayan, who went all out with a six difficulty. Watch out, Abliazin is coming for you. And he has to do a different entry, doesn't he, Craig? Yep, you have to do two separate entries onto the platform. So he's gone on forward facing, so whether it's a quarter turn, yes. The double pack super hard, <laughs> well, that's how you vault. I think we have a new leader in this competition. He's he knows it, he knows there, it. Hasn't it? I mean, he's looking for the high 14s and he absolutely landed right on it. He did, look, the turn on the double pike and he was high enough that he didn't have to pull that pike too deep. He was able to be concentrating on the landing. Fabulous vaulting. Straight down the middle. <laughs> We're going to have to wait just a moment to find out the score. Uh, Golgotha scored 12.166. She's in fourth. That guarantees Alice Kinsella at least a silver, Christy. Oh, I'm absolutely over the moon, you can't imagine. The final gymnast in this women's beam final is Melanie de Jesus dos Santos. Women's all-around European champion. What can she do here on beam? In two finals today, mounts with a fabulous high piked front somersault. And then the same move along the beam. She's so powerful, quite a slight little gymnast, but she's got springs in these legs. Now the two acrobatic moves linked. The backflip and the layout somersault, just a little wobble, but she's got wonderful control, wonderful core strength. And that's how you do the split jump with the half turn. Just a little shy of the splits on the change leg with half turn. Smooth with the free walk over. Elegant with her arms and hands. Good rhythm on those two leaps. The obligatory full spin. Keeping a rhythm, very smooth. Here's the big dismount, lovely and high on the double tap. That will be a strong challenge. 13-5-6-6 is Alice Kinsella's score. What do you think, Chris? Alice had a biggish wobble, so it's difficult to say. She had a couple of small wobbles and it's down to, there we are, a little wobble there and it's down to start value. Alice got a 5-5. Five, five. They were probably a little bit similar in execution, I would have said. Well, we I think see. those little wobbles that she had here and there. Adi Villov. Well, what a shame for him. But all eyes are on Dennis Abliazin. Are we going to see a number one? We are. He's bolted into the lead. 49-5 as an average. A huge score. But both faults added together. He's the leader with one gymnast left to go. And here he is. Andrei Medvedev. Israel. He was the fourth highest qualifier. Oh, 
won't be counted out of this uh, final, definitely not. Two, five, six volts in qualification. And it generates such power. Again, the double pike, Sukahara, but he had to stagger back on that landing. That will be costly, but better than falling over. He fought so well on that, didn't he? They're so risky, these vaults. You have to pull that pike in and just bring your... let go of your legs and lift your chest at the right time. It's absolutely split second. He held on a fraction long when your hips are behind your feet. You really have to fight to keep on your feet. Well, we've seen so many of these over the years where the gymnasts open out a little bit too soon and face plant the mat or put the hands down. I mean, that's the difficulty in this vault with the pike vault. The timing is so split second. It's really open, though, with his, with his pike there. I mean, it's surely knocking on the door straight, that. Well... <laughs> do you know, do you see that in the, in the slow miles? I think they try and be fairly open so that they haven't got to come out of such an extreme pike position mm. to create the landing. Yeah, and it's so difficult to block from your hands in that straight position into a deep pike. You know, the force going through your body. Think about the core strength. 14.333 for that first one. He's refocused and off again with his second vault. Never dare for the last vaulter in the men's European vault final. How is he going to wrap it up? Well, he needs to concentrate. Oh, wow, and he does a handspring, double front somersault in the fight position. That was better than the first one. <laughs> Sweet vault to finish on. Wow, that was, like, it, I don't say it was relatively simple. He didn't try the turn out, but he floated and floated in the air. Just the tiniest pace on landing. That was fantastic. Well, we haven't seen much of this gymnast before this championships, but wow. It's he just impressing us. Melanie de Jesus dos Santos awaits her score. Is it good enough to take gold? Is it good enough for a medal? It's good enough for silver. 13.466. What a championship it's been for her. The all-around gold and the silver on beam, but that means that the new European women's beam champion is Great Britain's Alice Kinsella. Wow, what a moment. Christine still as her coach. <laughs> Let me be the first to congratulate oh, you. Well thank done, you. the pair thank of you. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Absolutely delighted. Here she is. I'm sure there'll be lots of celebrations tonight. We knew she was capable of a good beam performance and she's trained so hard and so determinedly with her coach, Brett Inch, and with me until she flew out to Poland. But uh, we were disappointed at World Championships. Brett and Alice came back from Worlds with a new strategy and plan and uh, wow, it's paid off. And she was so upset the other day after the all-around competition surely that makes amends oh absolutely absolutely <laughs> oh, says it all yes she can't believe it well neither can i quite Chris, <laughs> hey you caught your european champion oh my word <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to give yourself a pay rise christine when you go home <laughs> well we're just awaiting the final vault score to come in out of Andre Medvedev. I hope he does enough to get in the medals because they were two fantastic votes. Well, it certainly won't be enough, surely, to take the gold from Abliazin. Oh, he's outside the medals. 14 4 9 9. Fourth, the worst place to finish. But that means that Denis Abliazin is the men's vault champion. His teammate, Arta Dalalayan, he will take the silver. Sharamku from Belarus, he takes bronze.
looking at me, can't believe it. I don't know why he looks so surprised because he, you know, he's no stranger to winning these big events on the vault. And I think uh, he's looking a bit bewildered. Two-time European champion. Well, we say fourth, the worst place to be, yeah. and what could have been. And he's thinking back to, you Those know, steps a little back moment. on the yeah. first one. I yeah. mean, you know, every step, a tenth. Hopefully, as in, he takes gold. <laughs> what a championship it's been for the Russian gymnasts. I mean, we said they had ten medals by, by yesterday. Well, another two medals today, first and second on the vault. Not fared so well on the beam for the women. Confirmation that Alice Kinsella is beam European champion. Melanie De Jesus dos Santos, she takes the silver medal and Lorette Sharpie the bronze. <laughs> Christine, just looking at those standings there and seeing that your gymnast up there, what a moment for you, what a moment for her. Abliazin, the champion on vault, his teammate Kaladayan takes silver. Sharamku from Belarus, he'll be up there to receive the bronze. Courtney Tullock finishes eighth. Let's just reflect then, if we can, I mean, how well she did, Alice, just to stay on. That was the key moment, actually. Yeah, very much so. It's the big series. We've um, tried, to con tried to condense the difficulty. So she, you have to have an acrobatic series. So she puts the free cartwheel layout, layout, and uh, that's the big series. She has to hit and she has to make it. And once that's over, she can not relax, but she knows the rest of it's well within her capability. And uh, she made that today. Looks like there's a bit of an inquiry here. Is that right, Matt? Yeah. Let's go to Christian Thomas, who's been watching this closely. Um, thoughts on the uh, on the inquiry, Christian? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it potentially could be for the Israeli gymnast, uh, Medvedev, because he, he, well, I personally thought it was a handspring double pike, but they gave him the difficulty of a handspring double tuck. Uh, so that was either an error, which is probably unlikely, or the judges made uh, a sort of a, an agreement between them that they was only going to value it as a, a tuck, which is 0.4 in difficulty. So obviously that would push him back up amongst the medals. So uh, yeah, just have to wait and see and see whether his inquiry is accepted. Oh, it looks like it has been. <laughs> Those, obviously, those extra tenths are just so, so vital. And with something like the difficulty, uh, we'll just talk through the, the Christian, if we can, the, the two different judging panels and actually how that score uh, comes to be what it is then as the final. Yeah, well, the, you can only actually uh, appeal the difficulty of the vault. You can't actually appeal any of the, uh, the execution, so your deductions. Um, so they've obviously appealed that so that it's been recredited. I mean, we'll, wait for, we'll still wait for confirmation. The reaction suggests that it has been accepted, but uh, until we actually see the, the figures on the screen, we can't well, actually confirm. But I presume then that the, uh, the difficulty would go back up to a 5-6 as opposed to the 5-2. It, um, it could even shoot him up into second then. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But as you can see now, they, they look uh, like they're slightly worried again now, so I'm not quite too sure what's going on. <laughs> the new score has come in at 14... 3-3-3, three, three, three. Uh, obviously the inquiry has been accepted, which would put him into silver. So Abliazin takes the gold. Um, there you are, yeah, 14.699. The difficult, look at the second vault, 15.066. Wow! <laughs> this one went right down to the wire. Andre Medvedev from Israel takes the silver medal in this men's vault final. I think maybe that's why Abliazin looked a little bit subdued initially. He didn't want to celebrate the gold, wondering whether or not he was actually going to be the champion. Well, when they showed Medvedev on the sofa there, he was looking a bit confused. There was no uh, hesitation. That was a double pike from Somersault. It wasn't a tuck, so that was an error uh, by the judges. You can protest about the difficulty 
score, but you cannot protest around the execution. So that is fantastic that they've amended that and the correct person picks up a silver medal. And there is a jury in the arena, and the jury will look at the videos, and it was no question, it was definitely a double pike front somersault. Well, all of Abli Asin's experience tells him to hold off on the celebration until the difficulty's been sorted. There's confirmation that Denis Abli Asin is the vault champion. Andrei Medvedev takes silver, and Arta Dalalion, he takes the bronze. Well, let's have another look, if we can. This was the vault where all of the controversy was over. No, I, I don't, that wasn't the vault, the controversy. It's to be this vault here. This is the handspring. Yeah, double pike front somersault. There you go. They'd pick that up as a tuck, and, uh, you know, it's easy to see that that was definitely in the pike position. Look, legs nice and straight, opened out for landing, and uh, well-deserved. Well, that delay means that we can see Alice Kinsella crowned as being champion of Europe. <laughs> Ooh, tears ups. of joy today and tears of disappointment <laughs> the other day. I was just going to say the ups and downs of gymnastics. Well, Melanie de Jesus dos Santos, she takes the silver medal and Lorette Sharpie from France, the bronze a great day for France on beam, but a historic day for Great Britain. And it comes in the shape of Alice Kinsella. Chris, can you put into context all those hours of training to get a result like this? It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> The champagne will be out tonight for you. <laughs> the national anthem of Great Britain. Britain's Alice Kinsella, the champion of Europe, on B. What a big final it was as well. I mean, she was pushed all the way. Melanie de Jesus dos Santos was the last gymnast to go, and it went down to the wire. Lorette Sharpie was first up. You know, I spoke to um, Alice in Birmingham and she said, I really want to make an impact as, uh, as far as Beam is concerned at the Europeans. And, and you know, she was like, I yeah. just want to go and, and show people what I can do. And here she is, it's Having European it. champion. When you asked her that, Matt, and she replied to say, I'd, I've got my eye on Beam final, I was amazed at her confidence. Well, talk us through again, if you can, through the tears of joy, Chris. I think Beth's going to show us the uh, speak this time. So, yeah, I mean, this was a fantastic routine. It's always um, a nervy piece of apparatus, but Alice got on straight away there with the double squat spin, not a flicker on it, and obviously has a very big combination early on in a routine here. You're going to see the free cartwheel into the two layouts. And it had a small wobble on it, but obviously then had spent many hours in the gym re learning how to recompose herself to be able to continue with the routine. And there's the two jumps that they have to show um, very well in splits. Very classy. She's always had a good feel for this piece of apparatus. And here you can see the forward element, the free walk over. Not giving anything away to the judges throughout the routine.
and just has the big final test, which I know she's upgraded this season and uses the double back dismount. Pops it up and looks for that landing, just a small hop. So a great, there's the double layout series with just a small wobble, but the rest of the routine, there was very, very little to deduct from. Whereas um, obviously you're gonna see Melanie who came second. Again, a very good routine, just had a couple of wobbles and that was the difference between the gold and the silver. Uses the flick into the layout. Just again, every time the gymnast takes an adjustment, the judges will deduct a small amount for it. Has great split jump half there. Change leg half. Is the free walk over. Very similar can elements that these gymnasts are performing so it's very easy for the judges to compare one gymnast to another gymnast every gymnast has to show a low element on the beam and then also uses the double back as a dismount but Alice obviously had it in the pipe shape and Melanie used it in the tuck shape Well, thanks, Beth. We'll be back with you shortly now. Uh, simultaneously, um, whilst the beam final was running, the vault final was on two, and um, Great Britain's Courtney Tullock was vaulting there. He finished eighth in the final, and here he is talking to David and Dave. Well, Courtney, uh, just not able to stick those landings today on the vault. Um, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed, um, but first European vault final, trying to look at the positives yesterday, it was so close on the rings, a um, bit guided to not not be on the podium. It was a very close final. Um, but vault today, I knew it was going to be tough. Um, but I can I can go back home and I can I can just I, like if I wanted to, I could just focus on rings and do that. But I'm trying to to work on all the other pieces and lift up my start values. And um, today it wasn't my down vault, um, but I'll be back for sure. And I know all I have to do is land on my feet on them two vaults, and I'll be on I'll be up there. So I know what I have to do, but I've got to stay positive and look at the positives from this trip. Yeah, you mentioned uh, rings yesterday, um, fifth place for you there. I mean, you've had a really busy season so far, haven't you? How much is that maybe? Is it maybe taking a little bit out of you? It has, I think, um, I was working out the other day, I think I've done 12, 12 or 13 competitions already this year. Um, so it is a lot. Um, going into this competition, I was trying to ignore how my body was feeling and just trying to stay positive. And, um, I did I did feel it in qualification, but I felt a lot better today and and in the rings final. But it, it has been a hard hard couple of a couple of months trying to qualify myself, doing that for the Tokyo, um, trying to do that. But I'm, I don't want to make that any excuses. Um, there are a lot of athletes out here that have been doing the same same competitions as me and have performed okay. So I'm not not going to take that as an excuse. Um, I know what I've got to do. I can have a little break now, um, but I'll come back stronger. Courtney, thanks very much. All the best Thank for the future. You. Cheers. Enjoy your rest, Courtney. Enjoy your rest. Um, so let's have a look at the gymnasts who will be competing on floor. Uh, we've got the graceful and dramatic Thor's daughter. She's going to start things off. Uh, Melanie de Jesus dos Santos uh, defending her title there. Claudia, we've mentioned, is the highest qualifier. She'll be going fifth. Mel Nikova is one to watch. And Alice Kinsella somehow has to recompose <laughs> herself now because she's going to be going seventh. Well, Chris, <laughs> how do you feel about this final? Oh, well, she hasn't really got the power to medal on no. floor, I don't think, unless others make mistakes. Yeah, well, Claudia certainly has got the power. Um, she is the highest qualifier, and he, she is uh, talking to David McDid after qualification. Well, Claudia, as we saw in, in qualifying, you're back at the top of your game. It seems topping qualifying on the floor. Yeah, it's pretty unreal. I just wanted to go out there and do my best and just to go out there and just enjoy it. And yeah, I land on my feet and I'm really happy about that. It's been a, a difficult year for you, hasn't it? Yeah. Because 13 months ago or something like that, before the Commonwealth Games, you snapped your Achilles in, in training. Yeah. Um, that must have been some blow. Yeah, and I was really looking forward to obviously going to the Commonwealth Games. And I was just looking forward to that year. 
and then from that one tumble just feels like it just ruined everything and I wasn't be able to walk I had a lot of rehab it was wasn't nice at all and I just wanted to get back out there and do what I love and I couldn't do any of that were there ever doubts in your mind that you would get back to this level I found it it was quite hard obviously stamina wise and shall I do these tumbles shall I not but if it happens and it all clicks it just clicks straight away into place like almost towards the end and we just said to my coaches look Let's just go for it and see what happens. You've had a couple of silvers at European level in the past. Nobody expected you to come in here and, and perhaps win the gold, but now it's looking that it could happen. Yeah, it is looking like that. I'm just going to try and stay positive, focus on myself on the day um, and not look at anyone else because that's where I do my best, is where I don't pay attention to any of the other gymnasts and just focus on what I'm doing and try and improve my score from the time before. Well, at the same time as that floor final, just a reminder, Claudia will be going fifth. The men will be up on the parallel bars, and uh, here's the order. Um, wants to watch here, Dalloloy and defending his P-Bar championship title there. Bryn Bevan will be going third. The new all-around champion, Nikita Nagorny, is the highest qualifier. Uh, and also Oleg Vinayev in there from Ukraine, three times European P-Bar champion. So, a lot to look forward to in the next few moments. Here are the gymnasts being introduced. There's Griff Britain's Bryn Bevan. He'll be next up, uh, Ahmed Onda just being introduced ahead of him. The women have already been introduced to the crowd here, but there is Bryn taking his applause. I do enjoy the uh, the parallel bars final, actually. Um, Christian, uh, was this one of your favourite pieces to work? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, I said he, that he as a leading a... question. I knew what the answer was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely wasn't one of my uh, one of my favourite ones. I've put it that way. shoulders, Christian. It's them big shoulders. <laughs> exactly. I'll use that excuse. That sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, but ones to watch here, Nikita Nagorny, we've said, did so well in the all-round competition. The Russians are just having a storming competition, but this is the man. I mean, he's had injury, but he's also had so many medals at world level on this piece. He has is the, the gymnast probably with the most experience, you know, has been Olympic champion on the parallel bars. And, OK, he's probably not at his, his best right now. He's been coming back from injury and he's up against really tough competitions in the Russians with Arthur Daloyan and Nikita Nagorny, but... We also know that he has the potential to pull that routine out and if he can produce it at the level that we know he's capable of, then he will be chasing the medal, that's for sure. Yeah, um, he qualified actually with the fourth highest score, um, did Vinayev, so, but you never know, he might be in there. Uh, Christian Bauman being introduced as well to the crowd, so there are the top eight from qualification. And Beth, if we can just focus, if we can... Oh, hang on a second. There's the confirmation of the order that the gymnasts will be going in uh, in the parallel bar final. Um, but also, let's just look ahead to floor because um, Thor's daughter, we saw her dramatic, um, beautiful routine in the all-round competition. Um, and no doubt she'll just keep that going. Maybe difficulty not so high, but really expression, beautiful expression. Yeah, she is. She's uh, The Dutch team are very well known for their sort of choreography and their expression throughout the routines. And she has upgraded her tumbles. Um, so that's why she's able to still make these finals. But I think for everyone, they always enjoy watching these Dutch gymnasts. Well, she got a third at the European Championships back in 2017. That's got a 13.3 in qualification. Very important opening spin, triple spin there. This is a very ambitious tumble, round off flip, triple twist, immediate punch front, very well performed. She's done a big twisting tumble. She needs a double somersault now. Sky high double tuck. The all important leaps. 
lovely control on those two spins. And a third and fourth, building the difficulty. Must have at least three tumbles. Here we have two and a half pike punch front. Beautiful, expressive floor routine showing such originality. She lives that performance. She certainly does, and probably not the most difficult, but will be one of the most dramatic routines in this floor final. Beautiful and graceful to watch. And it stands up, triple twist into the punch front somersault. She is just so beautiful to watch on that piece of apparatus. And, and gymnasts get rewarded for their artistic impression and selling the piece of music to the judges, and it certainly does that. Ahmed on that from Turkey, the first gymnast. He was the fifth highest qualifier. Also going to be in the high bar final, which is coming up a little bit later here for you. Strong traditionally on this piece of apparatus, the Turkish gymnast going back over the years. Showing great control there. The under somersault to one bar, linked into the Healy turn. And again with a half turn. Plenty of height there, the straddle front somersault. Have to be so precise with the hands there to catch the bars. Been impressed with this gymnast throughout the championships. The double front half turn. Well, that was a fantastic routine there. I mate under will definitely set the standard in this parallel bar final. And he posted a 15 in the all-around competition, so he's pretty handy. Super height and control. The, the gymnasts from Turkey have really been very impressive in all areas. And another beautiful dismount you could see almost upright when he landed. Thor, Thor's daughter, 13-6-6-6. First of eight gymnasts to go on floor. Now, that is a score that will challenge for a medal. Melanie de Jesus dos Santos, fresh from a silver medal winning performance on beam. She's the current European champion on floor. Great championship so far, gold and silver. Can she add here? But that one was definitely out. Lovely landing and lovely technique on that full twisting double back. Good control on the triple spin. Very different style, but for me, she's selling this routine well today. Her final performance of this championships. What another fantastic landing from the double tuck. Little puff of her cheeks in for this big tumble, the double pike. Well, a really charming performance. That first tumble with a foot out, but other than that, she didn't flicker on any landing at all. Well, she has everything in this routine. The power and the grace and the beauty of the routine there, you can see. Heels definitely out there and takes a step, so we'll pick up a penalty. There's a forward tumble, a straight front. 
no problem in landing inside the floor on the double back there. This gymnast is definitely going to be one to watch at the Olympics next year. Ahmed under 14 8 3 3. Bryn Bevan next to go for Great Britain. He's got a 14 5 3 3 in qualification. He's got a 5.9 difficulty. Oh, Bryn. Made the pommel horse final yesterday. Here he goes on P bars. Into the upper arm, straight into the front somersault, into handstand without hesitation. Now, this is where the gymnast must use straight arms, anything under the bar. And again, that's good work. Beautiful flight there in the long swing. He needs to be high above the bars, and he is the straddle front somersault. Plenty of height there on that release, known as the tip out. Fast hands in the flying back. Such a compact gymnast, needs a good dismount. The double front somersault, difficult to land. That was a fantastic routine, Bryn Bevan. Well done. Super stuff from Bryn. I'll tell you what, these early gymnasts are really piling on the pressure. That was a really stylish, mature performance from Bryn. He said how much he'd enjoyed being out there with the best in Europe on the pommel horse and he felt he'd really learned a lot from being in that situation and he brought it to the table there. Thirteen seven three three is the highest score so far on floor. So Melanie Jesus dos Santos leads the way at the moment. French gymnast Marine Boyer. Another very accomplished French gymnast. Two and a half in to punch front to open with. Floats on that leap. You have to include at least three jumps or spins as well as five acrobatic moves. We've seen a good leap, lovely double spin. Well controlled double tuck. A little bit loss of control out of that double spin. Each of the gymnasts have to have their eight most difficult elements added together to give them their difficulty score. Double pike. <laughs> Lovely smile to finish, a very expressive floor routine. Not the hugest difficulty, but very well controlled. Plenty of height there in the double back somersault. That's choreography within the routine, which is as important as the quality of the tumbles. Britain's got the second highest score so far 14.533. Good day out that for Bryn. Exactly the same score as qualification, so if one thing you can take from this is consistency of banging out these routines, that is a fantastic result. Well done, Bryn. Fehart Arakan, the second highest qualifier. 
World Championships on this piece. This is his year for a European medal. It's one of the most difficult routines in this final. And the somersault shows great control into the one bar, connects the Healy turn. So connection on those skills gives extra difficulty. And then the under somersault with the half turn. A little bit scrappy on the McCutts, but did well to keep it in control. So it's a 10 most difficult moves added together. High up into the double front, hard turn, sticks to landing. Good routine. Did well in the centre just to keep the form. Well, 14-8-3-3 is the score to beat from Ahmet Onda. Mm. Well, they're looking very impressive, these gymnasts on parallel bars. Very efficient. Ooh, the inquiry submitted. Mm. It will be very tight at the top. These scores are... Um, much higher than in qualification. Qualification scores on floor were very tight. And in the all-around competition. 12.933 for Marine Boyer. Well, from the masters of the parallel bars and the floor to the masters of the golf course, we're going to leave BBC Two now to make way for Tiger and his friends at Augusta for the final round of the masters. We will continue our coverage over on BBC One. Hope you can join us there. This is promising. Son is through, knocks it past the defender, he takes the shot, what a goal! Download the BBC Sounds app now. Catch the Women's FA Cup semi-final between Man City and Chelsea over on BBC One at 3.15. Here on BBC Two, bad weather in Augusta means we're at the Masters much earlier than expected. Live final round coverage now with Ailey Barber. Fantastic drama over the years and so much more to come today. Welcome. Please, Sundays at 9 on BBC One and BBC iPlayer. OK, guys, first position, let's go. We've a change to the build schedule this afternoon on BBC One with the Women's FA Cup semi-final, Manchester City versus Chelsea at 3.15. Now to Poland for the final day of the Gymnastics European Championships.
welcome to the last day of finals here at the European Gymnastics Championships. Uh, we're currently watching the women's floor and the men's parallel bars final. This is how things look at the moment. So uh, Melanie de Jesus dos Santos is currently in the lead. Uh, Thor's daughter second and Marine Boyer in third. And over on parallel bars, this is the situation. Just two gymnasts have been. Ahmet Onda has the highest score so far, a 14.833. Followed by Great Britain's Bryn Bevan. Well, we're going to join the action on floor. This is Jade Van Steenkerst from Belgium. She's the equal fifth highest qualifier. And the youngest gymnast in this field at 15. Oh, a sprightly way to get into position. <laughs> Very dramatic opening and start with a big leap. Most gymnasts go for a big tumble. Here comes the tumble. Very nice triple twist. Very well controlled. Two difficult twisting elements joined. Little bit of play acting there. The gymnasts are encouraged to tell a story through the floor routine. Strong performance here, a quite unique. But good tumbling as well. <laughs> well, she sold that performance with her face, with her actions. Well, fantastic to see Belgium represented in this women's floor final. Big tumbles as well. Young 15 year old. Just that little step adjustment on the landing there, but uh, a routine full of originality and quirky dance. Very high. Arakan, the highest score of 15.033. Wow, he's got into the lead. Parallel bars is a high scoring apparatus, isn't it, Craig? It seems to be, and certainly a piece of apparatus which is traditionally strong for the Turkish gymnasts really helped them in the all-round competition. Fourth up now, Nikita Nagorne, the new all-around European champion. The highest score he's posted here is a 15.4. He did that in that all-around final, he took gold. got a real pace to this routine from start to finish. Look at the control there. The one-handed handstand into the heel. Now look at that straight arms on the underbar work and again. Beautiful control there. That skill known as the McCutts. When he gets to the apparatus, it's almost, you know he's going to get through, but how well is he going to do it? Look at this, big dismount, the double front somersault with half turn. That's why is the all-around champion, Nikita Nagorne, smashes out another parallel bar routine. He's got to be in the high 14s if he wants a medal here. That little waver was the one there we go, he showed just how strong he is, didn't he? There, he was quite out of line, well able to pull it back. And it was his penultimate element, because the next thing was that near-perfect dismount. So, an updated score, 13.833 after an inquiry from Melanie de Jesus dos Santos. 
I did feel that floor routine was very good today. Better than we saw in the all-around competition, for sure. And Stinkhouse goes in the third, 13.233. Claudia Fragapani is back doing what she does best. The highest qualifier for floor. She scored 13.6. World bronze medalist on this piece of apparatus back in 2017. She will need to be at her very best today. Watch out for this huge tumble. The backflip, the double straight somersault with a full twist. And immediately back with another huge tumble, double straight. She makes it look easy and joins it into the jump. Super height on the leaps. Claudia always expressive, but after her time in Strictly Come Dancing has really added a new perspective. This is a tough tumble and she saves it just. So a few steps back after the double Arabian. This the big double pike. Beautiful landing on that one. Wow, what a performance from Claudia Fragapani. This time last year, languishing with a snatch Achilles. It's a tremendous fight back in such a relatively short time. Certainly is, and what a performance from the pocket rocket. I mean, look at this huge first tumble, the full twisting double back in the straight position right on the edge of the floor and then again a big double arabian this is the bit where she did so well not to fall over she fought and saved that but that routine is full of expression nagorni has gone into the lead 15.466 for parallel bars who's happy with his execution <laughs> he's over nine that'll do And that was even with that slight wobble in the middle where most gymnasts would have fallen off. Christine, you were right, picked that up. He pulled himself back into the bars, no problem whatsoever. Well, he made it just a minor deduction, didn't he? Well, I'd probably say a point one. It wasn't that. He didn't separate his legs, so... Well, we're all intrigued to see what form Oleg Vanayev is in. Three times European P-bar champion. World champion back in 2014. He's been really struggling with injury. He didn't do the all-around competition. But this is the piece that he really specialises on. Certainly is a master of the parallel bars. Oh, he did well there. The under somersault to handstand. He normally connects a heely turn into that skill, so... Oh, and I was going to say that just lost his momentum. Then he went for the very difficult skill, the McCutts. Slightly out of line. Falls down on the apparatus and off. It's a full mark. And as you've been saying, Craig, just back from injury. And even the best in the world need to have consistent training up to a major championship like this. Not many people thought he was going to take the all-around title at the Olympics in Brazil. He was one of them, no doubt, picked up the silver. He's so beautiful to watch on this piece of apparatus. Look at the height there, the double front with the half turn. Such a shame, but it's great to see Vanayev back in competition. Watch this space. There's no way this gymnast is out, that's for certain. Well, this is the thing, I mean, he's kept his difficulty up there, hasn't he? It's not like he's made life easy for himself. No, he's such a natural gymnast. 
so able to turn it on. Claudia had a couple of scoffs and a few little, little couple of moments. Yeah. <laughs> but again, as you say, you know, being out for injury for so, so long, so great to see her back. Yeah, we have to put it in perspective what this young lady's gone through in the past 12 months and actually to qualify for the final from where she was is a huge achievement. And to put another routine out like that, you know, and being able to get back to the gym and test the body, I mean, just fantastic alone, that. And, you know, there's you also have to have practice at competition. Once you've been out for a long time, that sort of ability to stave off the anxiety and get out and perform, that's a skill in itself. And we see from all the very best in the world, it takes a bit of time to get back into that. Well, we've just seen Vinayev on the P-bars, the Olympic yeah. champion fall. So, yeah. Well, there's some strong competition still to come here in this women's floor final, Melna Korver. Alice Kinsella as well. 13.366 puts Claudia into third at the moment. Three gymnasts to go. <laughs> She's saying I that I don't think I can hang on, but they've got to do it. They've got to do it without error. Well, next up on to floor, Angelina Melnikova. Took a bronze in the all-round competition. She's European champion on this piece in 2017. And we saw her work with such um, ease yesterday in the bar final. I think the pressure was all on the all around competition. Those two spins really nicely performed. This is also a very big opening tumble. Double straight with full twist, but completely out. Her unusual leap there, changing ring with a half turn. Double straight, same tumbles as Fragapani so far. That was much cleaner. Gymnasts have to have a forward element. There's her front somersault, takes it into double back. Landed with chest well down. Poses herself for this last tumble. The high double pike. Now that was a good landing. Relieved, delighted. Well, 13.366 is what she needs to match Claudia's score. She's sitting in third at the moment. Yeah, yeah, again, we've seen some big opening tumbles from these ladies in this floor final, but that was definitely out with both feet that's a point three that did well there uh, the front somersault work walk out into the double back and the chest was down and that causes a bit of kickback from the floor we've seen that from a few competitors this championships 13 one three three for banayev <laughs> he says i'm here that's the main thing i had a go I might be fifth. I'm on the way back. Yeah. He shaved his beard off from uh, qualification, so <laughs> maybe he should have kept it. Well, Petro Paknyuk from Ukraine is a gymnast that can threaten. He's posted a 15 whilst here. He's 27 years old now, and he knows he's the. He's got the moves. Certainly has. That was nice. Plenty of height and flight on that front somersault. No hesitation there on that skill, the McCuts. Very popular move amongst these gymnasts. He's got a beautiful line. 
by that I mean from his hands to his feet we're looking for a straight body shape they're high in the front somersault this routine's packed with originality one of the highest start values as well we all know it's not about difficulty it's a way you can execute the routine he's going well so far if you can stick the dismount, I think it'd be good enough for a medal, and he can! Well, Petro packed me up from Ukraine, packs a punch. He does, well, 15.033 is the score that he's got in his sights, he says, I'm that. Their heart, Arakan from Turkey, I'm coming for you. Well, we've seen him work parallel bars very well quite often, but this had something a little bit more special on this occasion. Just watched his teammate have a fall and he's ready to take the challenge for Ukraine. Can Melnikovic get up into the medals? 13 3 6 6, the score to match for third. It's going to be close. Very, very close. 13.466. She's gone into third, pushing Claudia Fragapani down into fourth. You were right, Matt. It was very yeah. close. Next, onto floor. Fresh from winning beam. It's Alice Kinsella. Not quite so powerful yet on this apparatus but she'll be wanting to perform elegantly always elegant Alice lovely control on the double spin lovely control and height on the double pike somersault And on the split leap with full turn. This is the big series here. One and a half twist, walk out. Into two and a half, immediate punch front, very cleanly and beautifully executed. Always been elegant and expressive. Has to work very hard on the tumbling. Good split on the leap. Now it's a long, been a long championship. She's got two double backs here as she kept enough energy. Up into the double tuck. Just a more simple twist now. Very cleanly done. Wow, great performance from Alice. Not the most difficult in the competition, but she showed her class, showed her style. I'm thrilled. Yeah, that European beam title gave her the lift she needed. It certainly did. And uh, I think what's really good is to see that they've, they've got the ability now, these British women, to go and string out a number of competitions day after day and we thought that she was a little bit tired in the all around and to show that mental strength to come back and put out two cracking routines like this is absolutely fantastic yeah i think it was a very very quick turnaround for the women they were she was in the last group and it was sort of less than 24 hours and she was competing again and uh, she hasn't quite got the experience and probably the strength for that Petro Pakniuk's gone into second, 15.333. Move over, he says, I'm sitting on that couch. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite brutal, that couch, it isn't, is, it? isn't it? If you're out of there, see you later, he's going, yep, you're off, and oh, I'm in. Oh, met Honda. Well, here's somebody that hopefully will be sitting down very shortly. What a championships this gymnast has had. Arta Taraloyan is the current European P-Bar champion and he's got his sights on yet another medal here. Well, 
He's such a powerful performer. The skills from the upper arm take a lot more power and they gain more difficulty as well. He's seen that he'll have to be on top form if he wants to take the title again. Oh, and that was beautiful, the height and flight as he travels along the bars in the Bavzar skill. Just look at the height there, straight up front somersault, plenty of time, spot the bars, swing out with ease. Beautiful there, a front somersault, known as the Homner. See that on the rings. Needs a big dismount, it'll all be how he lands this. Come on, pops up, the double front, half turn. Oh, and what a shame. I think that step on the landing might have cost him the title. Because up to then, it was a belter. He's just been slightly, I don't say under par, but he hasn't quite nailed most of the things at this championship, has he, Craig? Well, he's, he's not done too bad since he finished second, but uh, I know what you mean, Christine, because he was the one to watch going in. Uh, definitely the highest standing in the world. But like he said, he seems to have been well happy with his performance and uh, to look as fresh as that so far into the competition is great. Alice Kinsella, 13.1. <laughs> Down on her difficulty, 5-1. In qualification, she did a more difficult routine. So we know it's, she's capable of it, but uh, it was great to see her perform with confidence. And apparently, if you win an apparatus, you win the sofa. So uh, <laughs> that'll be going in the hold on the way back from Poland. Denise uh, Golgotta will finish off this women's floor final, the European Championships. She got a silver, the Europeans in 2018. Very exciting young Romanian gymnast. Team not so strong at the moment. And full, oh, full twisting, double back. I think I would describe that as a full twisting, double pike. Very high, but slightly out of control, double Arabian. Very good on the leaps. The Romanian team have always done beautiful leaps. Ooh, full twisting, double back in the tuck position, so that's a second huge tumble. A little bit scrappy there. She'll be wanting to finish with another big tumble. Lovely height. Very dynamic, sparkly routine, but there were errors. Yeah, I was just going to say, Christine, quite a sippy routine there, and she's a very bouncy gymnast. And I think once she can just control, you know, the adrenaline and the bounce, there, that's huge. The double Arabian fought to stay on inside the floor but unfortunately that step out was a point one point one at the start full twisting double back there i've been really impressed with this young lady during this competition and it's nice to see as i said romania back in the mix dunaloyan fourth oh no room on the sofa no room and goodbye to his european title well, that, for me, that dismount would have been a point three. Might have just been the difference. Well, this lad got a silver at the Europeans quite a while ago, back in 2015. Christian Bauman qualified with the seventh highest score. And he's capable of the high 14s. You often see this 
Swiss gymnasts in the parallel bar finals. Really one of their stronger pieces of apparatus. That was nice, fluent. That was good. Gymnast must promote, pre perform skills above and below the parallel bars as well as in support. And he travels back along to the centre with the tipelt. He's solid in the handstand. Needs a good dismount. Again, Ox for the double front. A half turn. We see so much in these championships. Qualified in seventh position. I think he'll really struggle with that routine to push into the medals. Classy work, but you need to have something really special to medal here today on parallel bars. We've seen some fantastic work. Yeah, 15 4 6 6 Nagorni leads uh, Pagniuk 15 3 3 he's in second Fairheart Arakan 15 0 3 3 13 point 3 6 6 Robert Bolgotta looks her just outside of the medals in fourth there's your champion Yes, De Santos adds the gold medal on floor to the gold medal all around. She's had a wonderful championships, silver on beam. Yeah, Melanie de Jesus dos Santos takes the gold. Thor's daughter, the silver, and Angelina Melnikova, the bronze. But once again, the Jesus dos Santos holds up the tricolor and waves it around the arena here in Poland. What about Ferha Arakan? What a performance from him. <laughs> so that's the finish of the competition for the women. Yeah, we can't celebrate any medals on P bars until the final score is in, and there it is. Sixth place for Christian Bauman, which is confirmation that Nikita Nagorne is the new parallel bars champion. Petro Pakniuk from Ukraine, he takes the silver, and Ferhat Arakan, who we can see celebrating there, takes the bronze to Turkey. With the world's smallest flag. <laughs> In comparison. But with one of the world's best parallel bar yeah. routines. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit <laughs> just one extreme to the it's other. A, it's like you're going to have a Christmas cracker. Magic to be celebrating. Come on, Nagorno, where are you and your flag? But this young lady's had a fantastic championship, Auntie Christine, and I think she's one that's going to challenge the rest of the world. Yeah, we've seen her the last couple of years coming through, and she's such a special gymnast. You know, all countries have programs where they produce good gymnasts, but she and France have produced good gymnasts for a lot of years, but this young lady is their special one. Yeah, what a championships Melanie de Jesus dos Santos has had. But lovely to see Thor's daughter, that really dramatic routine that started the final, uh, taking the silver medal. Really, really pleased about that. It's not just all about the dynamic tumbles. It's actually, you know, still the artistry really, really matters. Yeah, no, I would agree that, Matt. And uh, quite a few of the others who had the very big difficulty levels, like uh, Claudia and like um, the last Romanian girl, didn't quite perform to their best. That's confirmation that Melanie de Jesus dos Santos takes the gold. Thora, Thor's daughter, the silver. Angelina Melnikova, the bronze. Claudia Fragapani, fifth. Alice Kinsella, seventh. Pleased with that? Yeah, no, I <laughs> am. I'm very As pleased. As coach. Yeah, very Off the back pleased. of the European title, you've got to be. Yeah. Uh, Nikita Nagone is the new men's parallel bars European champion, Petro Pakniuk, the silver, and Ferhat Arakan, the 
the bronze goes to Turkey. Bryn Bevan down in seventh for Great Britain. Well, Beth, if I can bring you in as a European floor champion yourself and a world floor champion too, just to talk us through Melanie de Jesus dos Santos's routine. And there you could see she just couldn't quite contain all of that power that she managed to do in the all-around competition. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's very different format. The gymnasts have had no warm-up. They won't have touched this apparatus for at least an hour, maybe. So uh, to go back and just be able to do those big tumbles, you could see that she's given it everything and here is that first tumble and just slightly over rotated and I'm sure between herself and a her coach she'll be working on that ahead of the world championships because they don't want to be giving away those point ones or point threes for stepping out of bounds. And what did you make then of uh, Claudia's comeback performance? I think it was fantastic I mean obviously she had a bit of a stumble here but that is literally down to numbers what we've got to remember is she's only just getting back into sort of full competition and it takes a couple of competitions to get um, consistent so the fact that she performed so well in qualification and has come out a few days later and been able to produce another world-class routine obviously she might be a little bit disappointed but I don't think she can be too disappointed having had the year that she's had. Mm -hmm. And we were just discussing um, with Christine how wonderful it was actually to see Thor's daughter uh, in that silver medal position with all of that wonderful artistry. I mean, she's a drama student, isn't she, herself anyway? So uh, just wonderful to see that actually being recognised on the European stage and yeah. being given that silver medal. Yeah, it's very different routine. I mean, obviously, you can see the artistry. She gives everything to the dance, but she has worked on her tumbles. I mean, this first tumble is very difficult to do and very few gymnasts do actually use use it uh, because it is so difficult to do so she knows she's got the artistry there but she knew that she had to upgrade the tumbles to be able to match that and even the leaps and jumps that she did today sometimes the spins are a little bit maybe don't quite get credited because they're not quite round but everything today um was credited and that's why she's ended up with the silver medal so um it was great to see her up there in the medals and uh, Christine, if I could just bring you on, just to reflect the uh, the parallel bars, uh, if we can. Nikita Nagorne, we tipped him at the start of the programme, and uh, he really didn't disappoint here, did he, on parallel bars? Well, didn't he just? It really was just an, another incredible performance. He just seems to just bash them out one routine after the next, after the next, just showing so much consistency. And but to be honest, he made that little error midway through that door towards the end of the routine there, as you've seen there, just a slight... A uh, bit of an arch in the handstand, but other than that, it was a perfect routine and to be honest, just a great way to round off these championships as it was his, uh, his last routine of these championships. And we spoke about Dalaloyan um, during the all-around competition and the surprise of that uh, that dismount. He, you know, he picked on the extra little half turn there, how difficult his is. We're just going to have a little look at Dalaloyan's now because this, this is where he came a cropper, really. Yeah, I mean, up until his dismount, it, uh, it was, again, one of another near-perfect routine. Um, he's got some big, big skills within this uh, parallel bars routine, but it probably was the dismount where he made a little bit of a mistake. And for me, it looked like his shoulders were perhaps a little bit further back than where he would have liked and not able to then push himself into a more vertical position to get the height and rotation to complete the double pipe with the half turn, which he did in the all-around. Um, so perhaps a little bit unfortunate, he didn't look too pleased with it once he finished the routine, I have to say. But he has got high bar next to uh, try and rectify that mistake. Yeah, well actually let's have a little look at who he's up against as far as high bar is concerned. Um, he's going to be third up actually, he is the highest qualifier, is Dan Alloyan. Uh, we've got James Hall as well, that British high bar champion, he's going to be up fourth. Uh, Epke Zonderland three times world champion we saw some of his fireworks at the start of the program very much looking forward to seeing what uh, he's going to put on show here uh, tin tierbeck as well he's also a world champion ahmed onda we just saw him on parallel bars he's going to round things off um let's just have a word if we can about zonderland because he deserves enormous respect i mean for the majority of his um his, his world championship career he was studying medicine he's now a doctor i mean this guy is just unbelievable in so many ways christian he just and 
You know, he's one of those athletes as well, everyone on the international circuit has got so much respect for uh, because he's such a nice guy and as you say, he's just got everything within this high bar routine. He packs it in, um, he's got all the big high fine release elements, he executes them so well as just on top of that. So he is just one of those gymnasts that's incredible to watch and as I mentioned earlier, he's a big, big ambassador for our sport and showcasing just how exciting gymnastics can be. Yeah, well, I can assure you the hoovering European Championships uh, is not happening in the centre <laughs> of the auditorium. We're just getting ready uh, for all of the high bar gymnasts to come into the auditorium. Uh, while we do, we can hear from Claudia Frag of Pani. She's with David McDid. Claudia, how are you feeling after that? Um, very emotional. Obviously, I wanted to get a medal out of this because I qualified in first, but overall it's been such a, like a hard year last year to even come back here is just an amazing thing to do and i'm just happy to be here obviously i look really sad right now but it's all a bit overwhelming and everything that's going on but i'm really proud of how i've done i mean you weren't even expecting to be here were you at this point in your recovery i mean just a year ago you snapped your achilles tendon that's an incredible injury for anyone to come back from yeah it's been a really crazy journey um obviously i'm going to go back home and Obviously, keep training hard and have a little rest, go on a holiday. Uh, but yeah, last year was a really hard year for me, and I'm thankful even to be here and just to be amongst all these amazing athletes. It's just next time when I go into floor final, I just gotta be even better. <laughs> you watch your floor routine there, big tumbles, lots of expression as usual, a little stumble, but the commentators in, in the studio were saying you did so well to stay on your feet. Yeah, well, I wasn't going to fall onto my bum. <laughs> I wasn't going to let that happen. And I just want to go out there and do my best. And unluckily, I obviously took off a little bit wrong and the landing, I should have stayed in for a little bit longer, but you never know. That's a hard job. You've got to go out there without even warming up on the floor just before you go. I was waiting for two hours in the back, so it is really, really hard, but it is what it is. And well, as we say, it's your first big comp back after the injury. In six months' time, there's the World Championships in Stuttgart. I mean, you've got six more months to improve on that routine. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to work harder than ever, as I always do. And coming out of this competition, I'm going to hold my head up high and say that I've, I've done really well and I am proud of myself and everyone who's helped me on this journey. There's so many people that's involved just to get where I am, so I'm really thankful for that. You absolutely should be proud of yourself. Thanks very much. Well done. Thank you. And she so should, Chris. I mean, she said she was a little bit overwhelmed by the whole situation. Uh, do you think it was right for her to come back now? Was she ready? Oh, no, she, she was ready. I mean, she's done two great performances. Uh, what she has lost a bit, and you just cannot replicate it, is the ability to handle the pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've been out of competition for a year, that's just a skill in itself. And all the, she's had a long wait from qualification, qualifying top, all the way to the world. So not the way to the world, but the expectation of the world is on your shoulders. And, um, you know, you need to be hardened to that. And after a year of not handling, having to handle that, um, it's been tough for her, but she's done fantastically well. Most people would have sat down. You can see how, what determination yes. Claudia's got. I mean, obviously wonderful to be highest qualifier but that just comes with its pressures, doesn't it? If she'd it have qualified does. maybe fifth or what have you, then she may have enjoyed her experience a little bit more. But Claudia is back where she belongs. We're all absolutely delighted to see her. And what a, what a comeback after snapping an Achilles tendon. Yeah, and I'm sure this, you know, the World Championships end of the year, she'll have had a few more international competitions up to that, and she'll be... I expect to see her back on all pieces by then. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, very shortly, we're going to have uh, high bar to look forward to, which will be uh, the last final, actually, of these European Championships. No. And um, we've, we've seen some incredible stuff, including uh, a new European champion on beam, Chris. <laughs> Your gymnast. We're going to hear from her now. Let's hear what she has to say. She's with David McDid. Well, Alice, European beam champion, just tell us what's going through your head right now. Uh, lots of things are going through my head right now. Um, I was just going out to do a clean routine and just going to enjoy it, so coming away with a medal is absolutely amazing. It's really good to see a smile on your face because after the all-round final you were really upset. What an emotional roller coaster you're going through. Yeah, all-round final wasn't the best for me, but I thought I've still got beam and floor, so I'm just going to think about those, forget about all-round final and go and smash the finals. 
and out there on the beam, just talk us through your routine because you really had to fight to stay on at one point, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So the spin was good, but then my acro series, my free car layout, layout was a bit wobbly, but I was like, I'm not falling off this beam, I'm staying on. But the rest of it was pretty pretty good, yeah. And the same score as qualifying. Uh, what was it like when you're watching the other girls go up there and you're seeing them doing little mistakes? How were the nerves? Oh, because I was third, so I had loads of people after me. I was like so, so nervous. I was shaking, I was sweating, I was like, Phew. I didn't know what to do. And it's a second big gold medal on being for you after the Commonwealth Games last year. Just talk to us a little bit about your ambitions on this piece of apparatus. Yeah, obviously Beam is my fav favourite piece, so I obviously want to like achieve like loads of goals. So coming away with a European gold medal is absolutely amazing and obviously making history as well. Absolutely, and we saw you, you didn't even have any time to warm up for the floor, you were getting pictures taken, you had to join the line up at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a bit, it was rushed, so, but it didn't really bother me. I was just going to go out there and enjoy the floor, really. I'm not sure, but I think I heard Christine still, your coach, back home saying you might get the week off. Oh, didn't know that, but I so. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm actually lying. Oh. I thought you'd gone back in training. But anyway, <laughs> listen, really well done and uh, great to see you smiling. Thank you. Oh, well, come on, Chris. I mean, what's your reply? Are you going to give her the week off or what? Oh, it's... We, I guess so. <laughs> You're taking the week off as well, aren't you? You should go in. No, we, we have all planned to have Easter weekend off. Ah, so, so Friday, she can have Saturday, a day off. Sunday, Monday, we all have that off. <laughs> she can have a golden egg. <laughs> all right, then, let's have a look at who's going to be competing in the high bar, uh, the last of these finals. Um, Dana Loyan will be starting things off. Uh, we've got James Hall, British champion. Epka Zonderland, we've talked so much about him. We're so excited to see what he's going to bring to the table here. Uh, Tsin Serbik, who I'd really like to talk to Christian about in just a second. And Ahmet Onda uh, will be rounding things off. So, uh, yeah, because uh, Tsin Serbik, actually, Christian, he's, he's a world champion. He's been a world champion himself. He has, and his routine is actually... Uh, very, very different to most of the, the gymnasts within this final. A lot of them opt to use the Kovac element, where he tends to use the, uh, the Kachev style elements. And quite a unique routine, actually, how it's constructed. But again, he connects the release elements. He has, over the last few years, now built his reputation up as a high bar set specialist. I think this was his routine when he won the gold medal in 2017, becoming world champion. So it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very, very exciting final. And also really pleased to see James Hall in that final as well. Yeah, and it's a, this is a piece of apparatus that you used to compete so emphatically as well. So uh, just a word on the nerves when you're doing these big releases and how you actually manage to focus on that tiny bar with a massive auditorium when you're doing moves like this. Well, I think a lot of the time they use certain cues, you know, feel of a bounce at a certain time that will make you react in a different way. Um, you're obviously making sure that the bar, the tension is the way that you need it to be. So you basically you're trying to replicate that same scenario that you would be back in your training gym and forgetting about the audience, forgetting about the crowds, the nerves, things like that. Just trying to stay as composed and calm as you possibly can. And I think if you're able to do that and just let the gymnastics do the talking uh, as opposed to overthinking it, uh, then that for me always helps. And as you say, it's not the easiest thing in the world to grab hold of when you're letting go of doing somersaults and twists. But these guys out there, they're professionals, have been doing it for years and years now. So I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what should be a very good final. Yeah, and as far as just the actual makeup of the routines are concerned, we've talked a little bit about Sherbik there. But other than obviously hanging on and catching all of your releases, what is the key to winning this competition? Well, you also have to be aware of the, the angles that they're making the turns, so they've got to be as close to handstand as they can. Obviously, trying to catch and re-grasp with straight arms, and then the dismount plays a big part as well, trying to nail that dismount at the end. OK, Chris, thanks for now. Ivan Strechevich will be the first gymnast up, oh, and uh, he's from Russia. Our first look at this gymnast in the finals, very clean pirouette. You have to complete your turns before 10 degrees past handstand, but that he stalled a little bit on. Had to use an exit, nice Markolov there. He's got a very nice line, good swing. You can see him building up here for the Kovacs, the somersault over the bar. Beautifully at handstand for that turn. He's got very good variety of elements. Here we're seeing the Kachev. We've already seen the Kovac style. And two. Oh, and two in a row. You have to catch that first one at full stretch so that you can do the second one with a half turn. 
and he just let it slide away from him. I was thinking that was an interesting construction of the routine. Generally, the gymnast put the releases to the front of the routine, where his back end of his routine is quite release and catch heavy. And obviously, that uh, catch of half turn didn't just get his hands over the bar, and that's one full mark. Yes. Has to get back up, get back going. Nice stall to circle. Just the dismount. That was a beautiful dismount. Body shape in the air was great, but uh, the damage was done already. He posted a 5 9 difficulty, which was huge. So, shame for him and his first Europeans just wasn't to be. And some nice original work at the start of the routine, and I quite like the the variety it wasn't totally one-sided Christian picked up early about lots of gymnasts tend to just favor one release and catch skill whether it's a Kovac where here you could see he used the Kovac later on and the catch F skill and the fancy intricate one arm work and it's such a shame he'll be disappointed with that he's part of the team in Rio in 2016 so he has got the experience it's always difficult going first up as well. This has led to the sofa area. Little disconsolate there. 12 5 3 3. Yeah, just giving a 5 7 for his difficulty. By missing that catch ev with the half turn, he would have lost the bonus for the two moves linked. That's why when a fall often becomes quite expensive. The yeah, gymnast must show a, a, at least a hang phase before they come off. It's up to the judges to decide if they, they saw that momentarily hang or, or not. And that can be really costly. Italian gymnast next. Carlo Macini. He's 22 years old. Put in a 14 3 3 3 in qualies. Well, again, the Italians are on the way back in these finals. That's nice, the layout, Kovac in the full twist. So, any bending of the arms, the judges will take a deduction. So, they're looking for the gymnast to catch up full stretch and be fully extended in the body position. And the half turn there. That was good, actually. Nice to link it. Has to be within 15 degrees of the handstand. So it doesn't pick up a deduction. It's going well so far. Full twist in double layout. Slight step on the landing, but he's happy with that. And it was a good routine. And he's laid down the gauntlet. Beat that if you can, lads. You're right, though, Craig. Um, Italy have been looking a lot stronger in this championships, and they've always had a history of great high bar work. That catch was quite close, though, wasn't it? When you catch with bent arms, the judges deduct a bit. But it's far, far better than being too far away from the bar and missing altogether. Absolutely. It's a point one for a bending of the arms, and we all know it's a full mark for... Uh, Eating the crash mat. Just the full twist in the double straight, but very nicely executed. That, uh, the Italian coach has been around a long time. He, he was coaching when I was doing gymnastics. And that's a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Not as long as Matt, though, so I don't feel too bad. <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> well, Dana Lyon will be up next. And James Hall from Great Britain after that. And it's on demand. 14.066. Machini. That's the score to beat then. Two gymnasts down. So all chalked up and ready to go is the highest qualifier. Marta Dalloloyan. He's had some European championships. 
and he would just love to finish it with a gold medal full twist now that was fantastic dead straight arms on that catch and another sky high element he zips over this bar super the catcher in the straight position with a half turn right into handstand and the straight catch of again full of difficulty really so fast and you can feel his determination through the routine great style to be able to giant out of that Markov is great here we go for the dismount two twists oh. a wonderful landing that was a super routine well he said goodbye to his p-bar title will he be taking that one home zonderland you've got work to do my man what an incredible performance under extreme pressure well i don't think you need to be a gymnastic expert just to see the quality of that routine when we talk about catching on full stretch his arms there are fully extended and actually the height he generates from the bar above the bar gives him bags of time to see and and i'm going to put it out there that i like this routine over zonderlands for the simple reason is not does he just use the same group of release and catches of the Kovac, he puts the catchevs in as well and then we're used to this landing from him his shoulders down chest down where, that is the one to be where do you deduct from in that routine because his form his execution his difficulty everything tick 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 i think you heard christine saying after p bars he must have been a bit off <laughs> <laughs> he really is a very very stylish gymnast i was reading an interview from him when he was saying he was happy with his silver medal all round and that he did just say and nikita got a very high score for high bar but i am better than him 14.8 <laughs> is the highest score and no doubt is the score to beat he just has to sit down on that couch and wait well, he no doubt wanted to come out and prove that he is the best guy on high bar in they Russia. One, they took 1.1 1 .1 off in execution. I mean, it just you just wonder where they yeah. take 11 tenths off. James Hall from Great Britain, British high bar champion. Seventh in the all-round competition the other day. Well, he certainly doesn't look out of place with this routine. It's big. Oh, and I was just going to say, he's been struggling with a bit of a back injury. And he's obviously hurt his shoulder a little bit. And whether he decides to finish or just go, that's it. You know what, I'm out. This is not the piece to be going back up on if you've got a shoulder injury. Oh, yeah, you can see there the pull on the bar. I don't think it was the shoulder that hit the bar. It was the other side, what he got his hand on, rather than hit the mat. Yep, yeah, probably a smart move. Well, the coach and physio were straight there. Physios and doctors with the British guys. What a shame for James Hall. He's done so much. He's battled against injury to get here. That is not the way you want your Europeans to end. He did say earlier, though, he was surprised he managed to get to the competition because he's been struggling uh, with these niggling injuries and we just needed him to be part of the, the GB team. And uh, it won't be the last we see of him. And hopefully, with the great medical setup we've got at British Gymnastics guys from the EIS support our athletes not just in gymnastics but all the sports they're getting fit and ready for the world championships later in the year and wish you all the best with that not the way you want to finish your championships at all but he did a, had a great performance to be seventh all round James Hall leads the auditorium make way for Epka Zonderland. James, I wish you well with your recovery. Such a stoic member 
becoming quite one of the leaders of the men's British team. Such an important member. They'll want him back for World Championships in October. The next gymnast to go in this high bar final, Epke Sonderland, second highest qualifier. The score to beat is 14.8 for the Lion. What fireworks will he light here? It goes quiet for Epke Zonderland. He's under a bit of pressure. Oh, this is the big release. He winds up. He'll have to connect them full twist into the tuck callbacks. That's good. He's another big combination coming now. Full twist tuck into the game. Oh, what the hell? He's not holding back, but he'll. Oh, that was good. The squat is okay into the full turn. Good height there, the hot full turn. It'll be down to the dismount. Wraps in, double twist in, double oh, back. Sticks and land him well. The flying Dutchman does it again. But Zonderland. will it be good enough? Will it be good enough? Zonderland at his best entertaining the world with that. Well, it's such an exciting routine to have enough confidence to be able to link these huge release and recatches. But he does rack up a few errors, slightly bent arms on some of the catches. That was lovely, however. He's such a skillful gymnast, isn't he? And he's actually going out back to look at James Hall because he's a qualified doctor. I mean, that's someone you want in the, in the uh, arena. And nonchalantly lands. Oh. Well, this is some final, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't like to choose those to split them. Who are you going for, Matt? And who are you going I'm for, I'm going Christine? for Sunderland because I just love him. <laughs> Christine, who are you going for? I think he has more deductions. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I'm, I'm going, going for him. I'm, I'm going for Dalaloyan. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think Dalaloyan. But this guy is yeah. just great oh. for the sport and so exciting to watch. And the late, great Mitch Fenner, who we commentated alongside for many, many years, was a big part of his training a few years ago. Great to Here see Zonderland doing this thing. He's there! Zonderland is there! 15.266. Yes! <laughs> oh, my word. De La Lion goes into second. That was some routine, that one it. I'm over the moon, and he pretty much was doing that routine as well. <laughs> well, calm yourselves down, because the next gymnast is also pretty handy on this bar. Tim Tjerbik, world champion in 2017. What has he got to say on the matter? Well, has also silenced the crowd. What a treat. Good turn. And the Stolder Kachev and an ordinary Kachev and a Stoop Kachev and a Kachev with half turn. Four releases in a row. They are knocking the work out here. And another Stoop Kachev with half turn. Beautiful pirouette out on top of the bar. Turns have to be on top of the bar as near as possible. Here comes the dismount. Single twist, beautiful landing. Wow, that was oh. very impressive. Well, I think he upped his difficulty from qualification because he connected all of those releases together. Every time you connect to release, you get that connection bonus. That was super high. The straddle catch -ev into the straddle catch -ev into the straight catch up and again a straddle catch up with half turn so so impressive on the straight arms as well yeah the half turn as well from the straight catch up you see that that is a routine based around one 
family of releases, the catch up where the last couple, you see a bit of variety and variation and a full twist on the dismount, but you can see why he was world champion. Where are you putting him, Matt? Wow. On the sofa, but in which second. seat? Second. He's going to split the boys. You no, think? I, I think third. Yeah, I I'll go with third. you, Chris. But I've been wrong on the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Matt seems to be... Matt's going to leave us and take up judging. I can tell. <laughs> well, he's saying, I'm, I wish I'd like, don't sit down yet. No, you're not welcome you don't know at where the you moment. Are. <laughs> Get over there. Zondaland invited him on to the sofa. He, did. he knows he's meant to be there, but yeah. nobody knows where he's sitting yet. <laughs> well, 14-8 he needs to beat to get into that silver medal position. 15-2-6-6 is Zondaland's score. The, uh, I wonder if it's, that's the family of Zondaland. For a few patients. <laughs> They're sitting in the higher seats, they just wanted a really good view. <laughs> just to be exactly. level with him. Get level. He's got it the oh, second! Oh, Matt, you are, you are a judge. <laughs> there you go, Zonderland still leads. Two gymnasts left to go. Obviously, up in the difficulty, I think, played a big part there. There we are. He went, see you later in third, off you go. Second Italian in this final. Federico Adali, seventh highest qualifier, 25 years old. Must be daunting following the top three gymnasts. Got a focus in the job. Flies well over the bar there in the straight catch, Eb. A straddle catch, a little bit late getting his feet back there and the judge has been looking to get the feet back and ready for the swing. Come on, work this. On the squat, dislocate and again hops and loses a bit of placement on the hand. Come on, young man. Hop the one and a half turn into the inverted grip. Shows the in bar move there, the stalder. Just the dismount to go. Winds up. Just a single full twist on the dismount. Well, not his best routine. It won't challenge today, but a great building experience, nevertheless. Super to see the Italian guys doing better. The hop over that high bar. You want to catch it full stretch. That was much cleaner, and he shows us that combination of the Kachev and then the Kachev with the half turn. That was a little bit late, that turn, and that's where the deductions rack up a bit. Just that little hop on the landing. Fifth for him, 13.433. So much respect amongst all these gymnasts anyway for putting themselves out there on this piece of apparatus. So whatever the colour of the medal, whatever the placing, if you're in the top eight, well, it's a, it's, it's a huge um, achievement to make finals. You know, that's, that's the goals. Uh, certainly for the British, there will be a requirement to make so many finals and then so many medals. Ahmed Onda. He was in the parallel bars final not so long ago. Refocused, high bar guards on, and here he is wrapping up the men's high bar final. Last to go. And in fact, wrapping up the hold competition. He's a very elegant gymnast. He 
changes his swing. Oh, but that was a mile away. There was no chance that was going to catch. You could see when he let go of the bar that it was just a little bit late. If it's late, it sends you over the bar and not up. And so now he won't get the value of that move at all. And he also picks up a full mark deduction. Has to wait to remount the bar. And he does. It's always difficult to get back on and do your best work, but he'll be wanting to show the world that was just a mistake and the rest of his work is really good. And the half turn, just a little hesitation up to handstand out of it. Very nice squat dislocation work with the half turn, tiny bit late on that, but you have to have some close bar elements as well. That good stalder. Here comes this dismount, two twists, Zippy in the dismount, but a disappointing finish to his championships because he has done some fantastic work over this last four days. Well, they have really impressed us, actually. Another nation, the Turkish men have come here and shown that they've got a bit of depth within their system now. Once it got back on the bar, it's always difficult, you know, to refocus to finish the routine because in your mind you're thinking well what's the point now you know I've I've lost out uh, it's just a shame but he finished off well he's got some great skills in that routine you know and a big dismount but we've had a great day of apparatus finals today that's for sure and gymnast putting it all out there well it won't be enough to get up into the medals. Um, so Zonderland, <laughs> there he is, still smiling. Tinsirbik, the silver, and Dalaloyan, the bronze. But we shall just wait for confirmation of that when the scores come in. 12.466. So there you have it. He finishes seventh. Epke Zonderland, again, is European champion. Tin Zerbik has been world champion. He's got the silver medal here. And Arta Dalaloyan he takes the bronze. What a high bar final. I mean, it is such a great way of wrapping up a championship. There's no doubt about it, Greg. Well, there's no, there's no surprise they call it the Blue Ribbon event. It does definitely get the excitement going, and uh, we found it difficult to split those. Well, you didn't, Matt, because you called it. <laughs> so uh, you'll be leaving uh, commentary to judge in. Well. Uh, in the future but uh, that was a real final and I guess what's so great about this guy is he really does go for broke he's a real entertainer of the crowd wouldn't you agree Christine yeah he really is we've enjoyed his work at Olympics World Championships Europeans and sort of seen him grow from really quite a young kid with the long surfer looks to now a qualified doctor well, that was the thing. He used to really throw his routine back then, didn't he? Really did. And actually, the ways refined it now, and it just, I think it's just class. I really do. Well, if you think he was Olympic champion back in 2012, mm. seven years ago, uh, it, he almost looks like his gymnastics is getting better and better. There's no reason why he can't be Olympic champion on high bar in 2020. He keeps going like he is doing. He's obviously uh, settled into his life a little bit. He, pr he probably had to study really hard, no doubt. Well, there you have it. Confirmation that Epke Zonderland is once again European champion on bar. Tin Zerbik takes the silver to Croatia, and Arta Daladoyen has another medal, this one a bronze. James Hall finishes down in eighth. And I think we can just cut now to David McDade, who's having a word with Bryn Bevan after his P bar final. Well, Bryn, it looks like you've been working out in the back gym there. Just uh, some after sort of competition recovery and just icing, just to make sure I'm all held up for the like future and future competitions. You looked really happy after that parallel bar routine. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, I come out here into this final just hoping to do my absolute best, trying to improve on from qualification. It's an absolutely massive final, as you saw from sort of the work that was being put out. Um, and my main targets were just to sort of improve from the mistakes I made in qualification, which I did, um, and just try and tidy some of the rest of it up, which I also did. So I'm really happy with the overall routine. Um, you know, the, the scores doesn't re like it was still a good score. I was hoping for a little bit more, but I've done the best work, so I'm happy overall. Can you keep with saying that you know the same score as qualifying, so consistency? You must be happy with that. Yeah, absolutely. You know that's that's what it comes down to, especially when it's selecting in a team situation. The consistent routine, you know, what's what's going to push the team score in the future. So yeah, another thing I can take away and be happy with. Two finals out of four apparatus tried. Um, I know that you've got ambitions though to to do all around. Will we perhaps see you back challenging for that in, in the World Championship later in the year? You know, that's my target. Um, it's obviously not until October, so I've got a little bit of time to sort of go back to my training gym, maybe add a few skills, up my start values. But yeah, I'm aiming for an all-around spot at the World Championships. Brent, well done today. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much. And so a little look back on the wonderful high bar final. De La Loyan here. Such great amplitude. And the silver medalist, Tim Serbricht from Croatia, world champion back in 2017, proving his pedigree in this final. With a rally of consecutive release and catch skills. But just not good enough today to pip the Olympic champion from 2012. Uh, K. Zonderland wowed the audience and the judges with these very difficult release and catches linked together for the difficulty. Winds up for the big dismount, wraps in, double twist in, double straight, and hopefully we'll hear from FK Zonderland, who's with David McDade. Epka Wow, that's the hat trick of European gold medals. Wow, yeah, it feels awesome. You know, this is a... Uh... Definitely my best uh, routine in the Europeans ever, and uh, to do it at this moment is really great. How do you manage it? You're 32, you've got a child, you're a doctor, you train. He's over there. Yeah, I don't know, you know, I think uh, the balance is perfect right now. Uh, I enjoy it a lot at home and um, have enough time to train and rest, and uh, it gives me a lot of energy, of course. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, feeling really good. Yep, thanks a lot. Go get your medal now. Thank you. Just magical to see him back on the podium, you know, as as champion. It's where he deserves to be, and when you the risk, the level that he puts himself out there, he doesn't play safe, and that's what I love about him. Well, I, I mean, he hasn't played safe since for as long as <laughs> no, everybody's been watching. Him, to be honest, so I don't know why he would start now. But I think what's fair to say is what perhaps seemed almost impossible when he was doing it back in 2010 to 2012 he's now got that level of consistency yeah. where he's doing this on a fairly regular basis now you know each major championships is going out there and up in the difficulty in final uh, and pretty much most of the time hitting a similar routine so you can really see here just I mean, he's really incredible. As I mentioned earlier, he's catching these releases and making those split-second decisions whether it's possible to connect or not. And actually, some of the, his in-bar works, the squat full there and the squat half, you can see, were also very good as well, near the handstand position. So not really much for the judges to take off. And then finishes it off in the way that only FK could. Sticks his double twist and double straight. Just an incredible athlete. And the thing is, he's done so much in his career, hasn't he? And obviously, he's incredibly busy as a qualified doctor as well. So he's doing this because he absolutely loves it. Yeah, and you could hear him talk so passionately about it in his interview. And he's obviously recently become a dad as well. And he, I guess it changes their perspective on it. But um, just the genuine love for the sport. Yeah. And I think Christian spoke about it earlier. He's such an ambassador and such a role model. And... Um, when people people do stop and watch him, when you're in oh. the training gyms, everyone stops to sort of admire what he can do. Well, we have to talk about Alice Kinsella <laughs> as the new beam European champion. Yeah. We knew she might be in with a shout of a medal. We didn't really want to say too much, <laughs> did we? But to actually be crowned as European champion. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, beam is always one of those pieces where it can work or it can't. And today she just looked 
so calm and relaxed and obviously she had had a hard all around but she spoke about it in her interview and just sort of said well I had to forget about that and I had two finals to look forward to and it was a great start this double spin and um, so controlled and it's it is a very difficult spin to perform and then the first acro series and um, she spoke about it in her interview she yeah. said it was nearly offline but she was not going to fall off that beam and you could tell and um, she was fighting every step of the way mm. and what do you think this will do for Alice then because obviously she was distraught wasn't she after the all-around um, you know to, to have that European title at this stage in her career I mean is that come at a welcome time for her will this pile more pressure on her um, I don't think it will pile the pressure on her. I think you could see how upset she was after the all-around especially having performed so well in qualification and it has been a roller coaster of a week for her. I'm sure tonight there'll be lots of celebrations. And, yeah. Um, oh, well, Chris go... upstairs was, I mean, you know, <laughs> it quite been rightly. Hard for her. I mean, how incredible. All that time, all that effort, and suddenly it all just comes to fruition because you know if you put the hours in, you do the repetition, this is the result. It is. And she would have, I'm sure, been pleased with a European medal. But uh, I mean, even in the interview, we commented, she said, oh, I was really pleased to bring home a medal. And we were kind of like, it's not just a medal, it's, it's a European title, which very few gymnasts get to take away. So um, I think it'll give her huge confidence leading into the World Championships and then obviously leading up to Tokyo. Because the quality of the gymnastics that we've seen here at the European Championships, I mean, it's not easy to win titles like this. So going forward for the world, you know what that must mean for, for the likes of Alice and the, how great it is for her confidence. Yeah, definitely. I mean, every gymnast wants to win that world title or European title, but um, you can spend hours and hours in the gym, but I think you still need a little bit of luck on your side on the day. And um, it just shows how much she's been working on that beam routine. And she's done it a couple of times where it maybe hasn't quite paid off for her, but she hasn't mm. given up. She's worked with Brett, she's worked with Christine to go, do you know what, I, I still want that. Yeah, yeah, and the, I mean, the Russians have been standout, haven't they, at these European Championships? I know we've talked about them continually, but for good reason, Christian. They have, I think they showed pretty much their dominance from qualification all the way through to that last pretty final. Um, yeah, they really have. I think their strength that they have within that squad in the minute really is a force to be reckoned with on the world stage as well. And obviously, Nikita Nagorni, he took the all around title, but. I think what probably impresses me most about Nagorni is he actually made pommel horse final, he made rings final, he made parallel bars final. We yeah. know that he's world class on floor and vault. It's just the breadth of, of his gymnastics that he can put out there and different apparatus. Yeah. It really is just fantastic to see. Well, these European championships may well have come to a close, but there's plenty more sports still to come here on the BBC. Next here on BBC One, it's live coverage from the Women's FA Cup semi-final between Manchester City and Chelsea. Over on BBC Two, earlier than scheduled, Ailey Barber has live coverage the final round of the Masters and you head to the iPlayer now for a choice of extra live feeds too. But that is it from us here at the Euro Europeans. It's been absolutely superb. Two European champions have been crowned here. The king of the pommel horse, Max Whitlock, and the queen of the beam, Alice Kinsella. How it must feel to be number one. Bye-bye. Silver last night, bronze today. He is home and dry. Melanie Mujizu dos Santos is the new champion. This was pretty immaculate work. What a performance. Max Whitlock done it again. The Flying Dutchman does it again. Well done, oh. Alice. Fantastic routine. Great Britain's Alice Kinsella, the champion of Europe.